Welcome to this talk about anonymous credentials in KILT protocol. My name is William and I work as a software engineer for KILT, which is an open source protocol for verifiable, revocable and anonymous Web3 credentials that attest attributes like I'm a fair trade chocolate or I have a valid driver's license. They are verifiable in the sense that you are entitled to do something because you own the credential. They need to be revocable in case of misbehavior. And the anonymity is topic of this talk. Our project with name Portable Gavi is supported by the Web3 Foundation Grants Program. Thank you. And of course, build on Substrate. Before I start, a few disclaimers. First, this talk is not about deep crypto. It's rather about engineering and how we build anonymous credentials that work for our specific use case. And second, a short legal advice. This is just a technical presentation and the information set forth should not be considered exhaustive. Let us start with a quick look at our basic credential model consisting of three actors, a claimer Bob, an attester Alice and a verifier Carol. Bob wants to prove his possession of a specific cat to a verifier Carol, but she cannot check this directly and also does not trust Bob without the approval of a third party that she trusts. Therefore Bob shows his credential to Alice and if everything checks out, she signs it and sends back the attestation to Bob, which he can present to Carol. I think this should be familiar to most of you. So now let's add anonymity. We have four additional features for anonymous credentials. First, the credential itself does not contain any identifying attributes and you do not need to prove your identity in order to show that you possess these attributes. In fact, you prove these attributes already by showing that you have a specific credential. This means that you don't reveal your say name or social security number. The second feature is great for privacy, the multi-show unlinkability. When you show your credential multiple times to the same or multiple different verifiers, they do not know they talk to the same person. So you cannot be tracked over different verification sessions. Next, we have selective disclosure. If you have multiple attributes, but do not want to show all of them, you can choose any subset for your presentation. Let's say you want to prove you have a valid driver's license and your attributes also include your address, which you don't want to reveal. Then you just disclose everything but your address from the proof. This feature is also pretty crucial for privacy as you want to minimize the attributes you publicly show to a verifier as much as possible, since they can reveal something about you. Last but not least, we have the decoupling of the attester and verifier. During verification, only the claimer and the verifier are involved in the protocol. Otherwise, the attester could harm the claimer's privacy by being able to track to whom and how often the credential is presented. Now we know what anonymous credentials are and can proceed in how a protocol could look like when using them. In our case, it is an interactive one. We start with the attestation. Once again, we have Bob who wants to claim his possession of a cat to an attester Alice. Before Bob's claim can be attested, Alice has to initiate the attestation session by generating and sending a nonce to Bob that prevents replay attacks. Then he commits on the nonce with his private identity and sends his claim to Alice. Now Alice can validate the claim and if everything checks out, she signs and returns it back to Bob together with a witness. A witness is basically a large number and needed for revocation, which we will talk about after the next step. Now Bob can generate his credential using the signed claim. Let's go to the next step, which is the verification. Bob wants to prove to a verifier named Carol that someone she trusts, like Alice, 
attested him certain attributes and that at the time of the verification, this credential has not been revoked. But this proof should be in zero knowledge. This means that Bob does not send the whole credential and only reveals some attributes. So here we have selective disclosure. The rest is proven in zero knowledge. Also, Bob's proof is randomized and cannot be linked to another one, even if the same nonce is used multiple times. Therefore, we also have multi-shore unlinkability. As in the attestation, Carol starts the verification by sending a nonce and also a list of attributes she has to see in order to verify Bob's credential. Then Bob uses his credential, Alice's public key and Carol's nonce to build a zero-knowledge proof on his attributes. And when verifying, Carol checks three things. First, does the attester's public key match the credential signature? Second, has the credential been revoked? And third, was Carol's nonce really used to create the proof? If everything checks out, the proof is verified. So now the last thing we have to cover is the most important thing, the revocation of Bob's credential. And we haven't touched the chain yet, which we will do now. So let's jump back to the attestation phase. Initially, each attester writes something called an accumulator on the chain. This is basically a whitelist containing all credentials witnesses by default, if they were not revoked. And a witness on the other hand is a unique number that is valid against an attester's accumulator, like a signature over a message can be valid against a public key. So when Alice attests Bob's claim, she also sends him his credentials witness that is included inside her accumulator. When Bob creates his zero-knowledge proof for Carol, he also proves his witness is contained inside a specific accumulator that Carol uses to verify the presentation. So Alice needs to store every witness for each claim she attests. Otherwise, she cannot remove it from her accumulator, which means she cannot revoke the credential. When she removes the witness from her accumulator, she generates a new one, which she has to put on the chain. After that, Bob also needs to update his credential. So as you can see, new versions of accumulators could be added to the chain quite frequently. And the worst case would be that Bob needs to update his credential before every verification. To prevent this, a verifier can signal the claimer that they accept not only the newest accumulator, but also accumulators which are more recent than a specified point at time during the initiation of the verification process. Now the claimer only needs to update their credential if it has not been updated after the required timestamp. And this already wraps up the protocol. First of all, thank you very much for your attention. The project I was talking about is called Portable Gabi. And of course, it is open sourced and can be found on GitHub. It's a TypeScript API that uses the Substrate blockchain for the storage of accumulators. If you want to know more about it or Killed in general, you can join our Riot channel or hit us up on Twitter. I put the links here on the slide. Stay healthy, everyone, and thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.